Hello, everyone. Welcome to Cudlow. I'm Larry Cudlow. So, after yesterday's stock market holiday, with the Dow up over 900 points, today's market plunge of about 1,100 points really was a dose of reality. Why do I say that? Because Jay Powell's press conference yesterday, coming after the release of the Fed's policy statement, tried to whitewash the whole inflation picture. He backed off aggressive rate hikes, and he backed off aggressive bond sales from the Fed's portfolio to curb the money supply. He basically sounded like Joe Biden, blaming inflation on Vladimir Putin and COVID rather than excessive federal spending, borrowing, debt finance, and money printing. And as I said last evening, Powell was the non-Volker. The Fed institutionally will never admit its mistakes. And Jay Powell did some fibbing yesterday in his news conference because when he wasn't sugarcoating the soft landing or blaming Putin for inflation, he never mentioned the wage price spiral that has become embedded in the U.S. economy. And that's why he ought to appear before the new misinformation governance board, along with President Biden's attack on the Trump tax cuts and assertions by Biden that $5 trillion more in BBB spending would curb inflation. No way. Anyway, I have a long list of folks who should appear before this new truth board, but that's for another riff. So today in the market, a dose of reality, in large part because at 8.30 p.m. this morning, the Bureau of Labor Statistics released its productivity and wage report for the first quarter. And it was a bad report. It showed that labor costs have increased 7.2% over the past year. That's the highest in about 40 years. And the inflation rate for businesses increased 7% over the past year, also the highest in many decades. Now, these are cold, hard facts. Wage increases, the likes of which we haven't seen for four decades, are now inside the economy, along with price increases. And we're not getting out of that too easily. This comes a day after the Fed's big meeting and news conference where none of this was ever mentioned. No mention of wages and prices. None. Zero. Bad mistake. So, stock markets got to look at it, and they reversed course, and they began to more properly worry that, yes, we have a very high and sticky inflation problem that is not magically going to go away overnight. As suggested by the Fed and the central bank efforts to curb the wage price spiral are going to be longer. They're going to have to be much more aggressive and more economic pain than the government is going to tell us. Along similar lines, bond rates jumped up a lot today. The benchmark 10-year Treasury increased 13 basis points to 305 percent, so they broke the 3 percent barrier. That's also an acknowledgement that inflation is going to stay longer and be stickier than the Fed geniuses are letting on. Now, here's a key point. To hang in there with me, folks, we're going to do a little technical work. When bond rates go up, take a deep breath, the present discounted value of future profits goes down. Whew. Got it? Not so hard. In other words, rising bond rates bring down price earnings multiples which have been shrinking for several months. Profits are the mother's milk of stocks, and they continue to rise, and that's pretty good. And by the way, so is the consensus for tomorrow's jobs, and up 380,000, a little slower than the 562 average of the past three months, but still a very decent number. We're not in a recession yet, but I must say it will be virtually impossible to avoid a recession. And frankly, inflationary recession is the worst of all worlds that could be out there history shows that high inflation ultimately leads to recession and shrinking profits and higher interest rates and falling stock prices it's not good but i'll repeat my view the fed has got to be far more aggressive raise its target rate well above the inflation rate start selling bonds in order to shrink the excess cash they've injected into the economy. Also, my view, the faster the Fed moves, the milder and shorter the potential recession will be. But the longer they wait and stall Volcker-like actions that they have to do, then the worse inflation's gonna be. Interest rates will be higher, profits will sink more, stocks will get hurt more, and the recession will be deeper. The key for the Fed is to get back to price stability. That's the key for economic recovery. Today's 8% inflation needs to get back to 2% or less. 
but it's going to be hard. And anything Jay Powell says otherwise, he will have to face the misinformation truth board again. Blaming Putin and COVID and the woman in the moon is not going to work. Be honest with investors and the workforce. That's a much better approach, Mr. Powell. Now, here's the final point. It's not all on the Fed. I know it may be too much to ask, but it really would be a pretty good idea if Congress would freeze domestic spending. Another good idea, make the Trump tax cuts permanent. A third good idea, roll back the jihad against fossil fuels and deregulate the recent NIPA regulations that are preventing oil and gas production, pipelining, LNG exporting. They're even stopping infrastructuring highways, bridges, roads, and tunnels. So think of this, folks. If we had sound money, if we had lower taxes, if we had deregulation, we would really make this a truly growthier economy. So save America. The cavalry is coming. I sure hope they know what to do when they get there. And that's my riff tonight.